Terry, what an absolute pleasure to sit here and see you on my screen before me and have a chat about a film which has been a part of my life for so long now. So first of all, thank you for giving me some of your time. I really do appreciate it. <laughs> it's my total pleasure. I'm happy to be here. Thanks for having me, Dave. Oh, well, yeah, like I say it is my pleasure because uh, I spit on your grave. It goes back to me walking into a video store, in a video store that I then went on to work in. Uh, big horror fan. This is pre what was called the video nasty days here in the UK. Uh, right. Seeing I spit on your grave, renting it, going, what? I mean, it knocked me off my feet. I'm sure everybody that watches this the first time, you go, wow. Um, and it's it, to see it now, this 4K release that myself and Tina, my partner, watched the other day. It's a cliche to say it. But it really was like watching it for the first time. The picture is incredible. You must be so happy with this release, Terry. I completely agree with you. It actually blew me off my seat also. I was shocked at the details, oh, at yeah. the lushness, the colors, the reds, the blood, the wilderness, the trees, yeah. the background. You know, Everything was just like popping in my face for the first time. And it really was a new experience for me as well. Um, yeah, I, I was shocked at the way it looked and the, you know, this is the first time in 44 years that we remastered the actual camera negative of my father's movie that was in a vault yeah. for many decades and Kaleidoscope Home Entertainment is bringing out this new release with some exclusive mm -hmm. uh, material yeah. for the UK with Camille Keaton commentary yes. <laughs> and interview with Chris Paglioli with, uh, he's a, a specialist with the horror movies and all that. I mean, there's just a lot of fun stuff on here. So this is the definite go to and grab, you know, release of, of this movie. You won't be disappointed. <laughs> oh, no, I encourage everybody to go and buy it. Definitely. Because like you said, you will not be disappointed whatsoever. You will not. Absolutely not. Because like I, said, I remember like watching it on VHS and then the whole Video Nasties thing kicked off here in the UK, which is, was just ridiculous. You know, we could spend hours just talking about that. And I remember, right. Terry, from where I used to live, I had to do, I did a, a it was 200 miles each way. So it was a 400 mile round trip to London, uh, pre-internet, obviously. Uh, this was right. all, this was all done through fanzines and you go, oh, I've, I've got a copy of this, this and the other for sale. And you do a 400 mile round trip to London wow. to end up <laughs> in this basement in London and to say, oh, I've had this letter because it was all done via letters. I've got this letter from so-and-so. And he would then let you into a back room in the basement where all the uncut, like, third and fourth generation copies were. And then you'd buy them from there from some extortionate price. And then, thankfully, that disappeared. Uh, then I got I Spot on Your Grave on DVD. I got it on, on Blu-ray because Kaleidoscope released the box set of all of the films a couple of years ago that we yes. were lucky enough to, to review as a great set. And then when we got this, like I said, this, if you'd have showed me in London in that basement, this, it would have just, I would have fainted probably. It's incredible how, right. how times have changed and changed for the better, I say. I, I agree with you, yes. And, you know, what's interesting about this movie, a lot of the old prints and a lot of the old VHS had a very scratchy, dirty, yeah. grainy look to it. And that complemented the subject matter quite <laughs> well. So now you're looking at this movie that is obviously cinematically very lush and pretty in the new 4K, and yet the brutality hasn't changed. I mean, the movie mm -hmm. is oh. the same movie, yeah, yeah. but yet you're looking at it through a very clean window, and suddenly it's, it's, it's more shocking in a way because it's so clean and pretty, but yet the movie is so ugly and <laughs> dirty in its own way that it's the combination of the two is kind of like, it, it definitely messes with your mind, oh, you yeah. know? <laughs> it, do, it does. <laughs> and, and for anybody that doesn't know the genesis of the film with your father and what happened to him, uh, which is covered on your amazing documentary that we'll get into in a little bit, Growing Up With I Spit On Your Grave, uh, which I rewatched on this 4K set and enjoyed it even more on another view. Oh, great. Uh, Thank you. I'm glad I'm glad you got to enjoy that. Oh, Thank you. Yeah, we, we'll definitely get into that because there's a lot to talk about with that. But how, 
you know, with you, with your father walking and then this naked woman appears from nowhere, which then was the genesis for this. It's such an incredible story. It really is. And, you know, it's it's really shocking that this actually happened, that, you know, yeah. my father bumped into this girl coming out of the woods with his best friend, Alex, driving, and my sister, who was, I think, about eight years old at the time in the back seat, and to come across this girl who was bloodied, jaw broken, completely naked, and she, she fell on my father's feet and said, I was raped, I was raped, and they brought her to the police station, mm-hmm. and the cop treated her even just as bad, like, why were you in the park at that time? Why did you take the shortcut? Why were you wearing shorts? Why, why, why? My father got so upset and he ended up writing a story about this, but he added the sweet revenge yes. for his own personal satisfaction, not knowing what would become of this movie. He just he just had to get it out of him that he was so angry at, number one, that this poor girl was raped, and number two, that the cops treated her uh, and, and raped her in a different way with the justice system. There was no justice with the police there. Mm-hmm. So his anger is why this movie became what it is. Yeah. He vented his frustration out and made this movie based on his, you know, uh, encountering this poor gal in, in, the, in this park in New York. And out of that comes one of not only one of the most iconic horror films ever, but one of the most iconic films ever, I would say. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, you know, it, it became what it became. And it's, you know, the audiences are still very divisive on the subject matter. Is it promoting violence? Is it uh, empowering women? You know, there's a lot of divisive, uh, divisiveness with this movie and mm. people are still on the fence with it, you yeah. know. Well, Tina wanted me to tell you because she watched it like myself way back when, in the, you know, in the days of VHS. And she, she could never watch it again. You know, it really turned her stomach and, and she, she just couldn't watch it. So when we got this 4K set, I said, God, you've got to sit and watch this with me again. And she wanted me to tell you she, she really loves the film now. She, she got so engaged with it and it's like a completely different film to her now all these years later. And she wanted to let you know, uh, you know, thank you for, the, for, for this 4K release and, and for the film and with your father, of course, because it's such a different film to her and she would happily watch it again. Whereas before, back in VHS, it was, no, I don't want to watch that, but she will now. And, you know, that, that time separation... Yeah, you know, and and thank Tina for her comments. You know, I mean, I I think people are embracing this movie in different ways nowadays and understanding it a little differently. Mm -hmm. Um, Mayer, my father, kept very quiet for the first uh, 10 or 15 years after this movie came out until he did an interview with Fangoria way back when, which revealed uh, that it was based on a a true story Mm -hmm. based and uh, and now a lot of people know a lot more about this movie, and I think they're embracing it in different ways. Yet it's still very hated, and it's very loved. You know, people have extremely mixed emotions about this, and it is a very difficult movie to watch. Mm-hmm. Even mm-hmm. even when I watch it nowadays, when I'm you know when I'm watching it for whatever reason with a group of people or what have you, it's very hard to look at the sexual assault scenes. They're very hard to look at. And so by the time the halfway mark comes in and and Jennifer Hills begins to recuperate and then the revenge yes. takes place, <laughs> it's so satisfying. And, you know, and, you know, you're just throwing your fist in the air and you're just with <laughs> Camille Keaton as Jennifer Hills. And and boy, does Camille give an incredible performance oh, yeah. throughout this movie. You know, she is a, a big part of the success of why this movie is still still has a a strong heartbeat right now you know all these years later oh she most definitely is and again for anybody that doesn't know it was so good again to see you because of course you're in it as and i was i was the little boy you're the little boy and i was watching the little boy (laughs) watching you at the gas station (laughs) and i was thinking you know if if you'd have known then what what status this film would become all these years later 
things like I was thinking, oh, I wonder if Terry's still got the T-shirt that we was wearing as a kid then, because that would be such a piece <laughs> of movie history right there. I wish I did, actually. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so Yes. Yes. No, my sister also played my sister in the movie. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. So that, that was an interesting time for me. Very interesting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's it been like then? You know, let, let's take the, the title from your documentary. What's it been like growing up with Ice Pit on your grave? You know, it, it's really been more about the ups and downs and the trials and tribulations that my father has gone through mm -hmm. getting this movie out there. Um, the, the, you know, once Jerry Gross in 1980 took over the movie from what you see back there, Day of the Woman, yes, yeah. to, you know, I Spit on Your Grave, Jerry Gross, he's a mastermind of marketing. So he had the right to change the title, the mm -hmm. poster, the campaign, and Little did we know he hired a very young Demi Moore yes. to pose as the model. So that is Demi in the picture right there. That's Demi Moore on, <laughs> on the photo. So that little trivia is also mind boggling in its own way. Uh, and Demi finally admitted in her book in 2019, a few months after my documentary was released, that she was the girl in the poster. <laughs> so, yeah. So that was very nice that just after my film was released, that she came out and, uh, you know, admitted to it, which was great. So, yeah, yeah that's to me over there but yeah so it's growing up with this movie has been fascinating in many ways just seeing how it went from being very hated and people you know roger ebert and siskel and yes, gene siskel yeah, yeah. were picketing in front of movie theaters don't see this movie you know and the, the theater owners took the movie off the screen but then a few months later, the video industry came into light mm -hmm. and people were able to rent this movie in the comfort of their own living room and watch it and watch it and watch it. And they still are <laughs> watching it till this day. <laughs> so it's really crazy, you know, growing up with this film. And so it's really been more about the struggles and getting this movie out there. Um that's been really the aspects of growing up with it. You know, it's been fascinating. I think it's always good as well to have a film like this where, like you said, it's very divisive, but you either, you know, you, you, it's such a great film for me. And again, like I said, it's a huge part of my cinema watching history. And there's the other side of the people that don't want anything to do with it. But I think it's really good to have those extremes than just be in the middle and it's a completely forgettable film. So, you know, it, it, for me personally, I think, it, yeah, it's good. If you love it or hate it, well, at least it's done something. It's stirred some emotions in you. Exactly. And, you know, my father hates the title, I Spit on Your Grave. He named it Day of the Woman. Great title, for, Day of the Woman. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think so. And it's more honest. And, you know, but when Jerry Gross took the movie and made it seem like an exploitation film, you know, even writing on the caption and the tagline that this lady just cut chopped broken and burned five, five. men yeah five. there's only four, <laughs> four. men <laughs> you know but he just wanted to you know make it more exploitative and sensationalize it yeah and uh and my father till this day doesn't understand why jerry gross had to say five like what's no. the difference four five six you know <laughs> So, but to show you that that Jerry Gross really wanted to plant the seed and to make this, you know, this small film explode into your face. Mm -hmm. And he did. I think the campaign really worked. And personally, I am much happier with the title I Spin on Your Grave, because that's a title that you remember. Oh, yeah. Just like oh, yeah. the movie. You watch the movie once and you you won't forget it. Oh, it's no. going to stay <laughs> in you. You know, it's one of those movies that sticks with you. Yeah. And then it becomes a conversation piece and you start to talk about this movie once the credits roll. Most movies, when the credits roll, you move on to your next thing, whatever you're doing. But this movie, when the credits roll, it opens a conversation. Definitely. And it's really fascinating that the conversation is still just as strong and relevant today than it was decades ago yeah. when it first came out. Yeah, when you think it's, what, it's 45th anniversary next year? 
Next year is the 45th. Wow. Crazy enough. <laughs> yes. That's come pretty quick. That's come it quick. is. It has come. It's flying by. Yeah. <laughs> when exactly. was the first time that you actually sat down and watched the film in full? I was about probably 14 or 15 years old when I saw it for the first time. And I was shocked. I was literally shocked and appalled that my father would make such a movie like this. It seemed so dirty and ugly and brutal. And I don't know if even over the top is the right expression. It would, if What's the expression beyond over the top? <laughs> you know, it, it really horrified me. And I remember one day my father reminded me about this uh, a few years ago. One day I had a fight with my father in my teenage years. <laughs> and I remember, you know, yelling at him and saying, only a sick man would make a movie like this. You know? <laughs> And when he reminded me about this, I actually forgot I said that. But then I remembered, yes, I did say that to him. You know? <laughs> so there, you know. <laughs> so what was the genesis then of you then going on to make your documentary growing up with I Spit on Your Grave? How did that first form and then go on to actually going into production? You know, when when the remake came out in 2010 and there was a lot – of dialogue about the 78 again mm -hmm. not that the di not that the dialogue about the 78 film ever dissipated oh, but no. it you know the remake just brought it out to the millennial audience and uh to the young viewers and it just became something where I, I was like you know what there's a story behind the original and i would really love to tell it on how the movie was made why it was made and um, that's when I started to say, let's, I'm going to make a documentary about this. And I, at first it was called, I spit on your grave, the man and madness behind it all. Uh -huh. And after about a year of editing and interviewing my father a couple of times, I finally realized I have to get Camille Keaton and I got uh -huh. Camille. And then I said, I got to get the four actors and I got <laughs> two out of the four male uh -huh. actors in it and my sister. And I got the production manager and someone from the distribution aspects of it through Jerry Gross and fans around the world. And I finally said, here's my story. You know, I'm able to tell my story, not with my own words, or my father, but with a lot of other people. And it became very dynamic where I'm really happy with the finished product and I'm getting a lot of great feedback and people thanking me for sharing and telling the story about this notorious movie. Um, so it meant a lot to me to make this. And, and little did I know that when I started doing uh, the documentary that I would end producing and editing I Spit in Your Grave, Deja Vu, yes, reuniting, yes. yeah, bringing back Camille Keaton and Mayor Zarki. And uh, also my sister and I had reoccurring roles where we came back as the kids of Johnny. So that was exciting. That was fun. And uh, it's it's been a nice ride. And being part of my father's legacy, having my own hands in it right now oh, feels yeah. really good. And uh, so it's been it's been an experience and and very very enjoyable uh, for the most part. Oh yeah, because I really do love your documentary, Terry. And like I say, this was the second time that I watched it. You know, because it's one of the ex extras on this great set, and it, it was the first time that Tina had watched it, and she loved it as well. I think the way that you've put it together, because a lot of documentaries like this can just end up just being talking heads. You just put everything together. It, it it just draws you into it. You've got the stories from the people that were there at the time. You've got photographs. You've got behind the scenes stuff. And it all flows so brilliant and tells the full story. It tells everything you want to know as a fan about the of the film going all the way through and does it in such a, such an informative and entertaining way, Terry, that it's, you know, it, again, it's once you've watched this 4K version of I Spit on Your Grave, you've everybody listening and watching has, has got to watch growing up with I Spit on Your Grave because you've done a tremendous job, Terry, you really have. Thank you. I really appreciate that. And, and you are the reason I made this. People like you that understand that this movie is there's more to it and you know i i hope i took a lot of the mysteries out of it as well mm -hmm. um and i was so glad that i found bill taskell who was the production manager i think he uh his approach 
to all the effects were so simplistic yet very effective. Oh, yeah. And the way he describes how he went and got the, the motorboat contraption and the way the bubbling of the blood in the bathtub, I mean, just hearing all that. You know, and hearing also Gunter claiming that he his back went out during yes. the rock scene, you know, so all, a lot of information was new to me. And I thought I knew everything about this movie, <laughs> but making this documentary actually opened up a lot of new information for me as well. So we all went through a learning experience, myself included. And I'm, I'm so happy that I'm able to bring this to people like you that can appreciate and, you know, and want to learn more mm -hmm. about this title. So oh, yeah. thank you for your kind words. I appreciate that. Oh, thank no, you. no, you, you know, you're more than welcome with, you know, such a great documentary like that. I'd love to know from the idea stage of making this documentary to the finished edit, how long did that take in total? It was actually five years in the making. I started it in about 2013 or 14, right around there. And then in 2015, you know, 2015 or so, 16, we started to do Deja Vu. And that mm -hmm. took me away from my project, the documentary, for quite a while because I was working for years on this film. And so at the very end, it all came together at the same time where both I Spit in Your Grave, Deja Vu, and my documentary were released at the same time in April of 2019. So that was a special treat. Yes. When I started the documentary, I, I would have never thought that I would be releasing this on the same day with the sequel <laughs> yeah. to the original. Uh, that was mind blowing. And that was a reward and a treat in itself. Oh, I'm sure it was. What a, what a great bit of fate that was to, to put those things together. Uh, yeah. Per perfect timing. Definitely. And when you look yes. back, when you look back on the making of it, is there anything particular, uh, a particular day or an interview or something in the edit stage where immediately springs to mind as you know as a really happy memory of putting this documentary together you know getting camille and having camille fly out here from mm -hmm. florida and that to me was the best day i was with her for eight hours we filmed inside a home for half the day and then we filmed outside in the backyard of the same home and i love the moment that my father came and surprised camille oh they yes. hadn't Yes, at the end of the documentary, they hadn't seen each other for a long, long time, maybe 10, 15 years at least. And Mayor coming and surprising Camille, that was the most special moment for me. And it's actually my most happiest moment in the documentary that the two of them are together and just the way that they get along. And, and it, it was just a joyous moment for me. So that was the best moment for me. Oh Absolutely. yeah, that is such a a great piece of that documentary when he walks around. Like I said, she's just not expecting anything whatsoever. <laughs> exactly. And, exactly. And then you capture that moment and it's there forever. <laughs> and it's so good. And you can just keep replaying it and watching it. It's so the timing the timing was great. And I remember that we had planned this was like the big plan of, of the shooting day. And I remember I was just like waiting for the right moment. I had to give a signal to my production assistant outside <laughs> when to, to let him come in and I, it was there was a one moment that i said okay i just pressed this button and then the time the, everything was just so beautifully perfect that i couldn't believe the way it all came out so that was really a cherished moment yes <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not surprised with with all of that it's in, it's incredible and going forward with i said there's 45 years next year you know i'm sure this thing's planned and you know as, as silly as it sounds I'm sure the 50th anniversary will be here before we know it. And, you know, <laughs> this, true. this film, this film, much like Jennifer, refuses to die. Is there, are there already plans in stage? Obviously, don't give anything away, but, you know, can, can you hint at anything going forward of maybe things you'd, you'd like to do? You know, there are many things that I'd like to do, and things will be done. So let's just say there's more spit to come, Ooh. and that's all you know, coming up in, in the future, but definitely more spit to come without a doubt. 
That sounds. I'm intrigued now, Terry. I'm intrigued and excited by all by, by, all, by, all, by all of this, definitely. And, and with your dad as well, you know, with this 4K and everything. How you know it, it must be such a again for him and you and the whole family to be here in 2022 and having the best possible picture and sound release of this film with your documentary on again. You know, more of a family tie with it. It must be such a great time for all of you. Yes, it is. You know, it's and this uh, particular remastering of the 4K, it meant a lot to me. My mom passed away in 2006 and my mother did the actual negative cutting wow. on I Spit on Your Grave. I remember when I was a little boy, I would walk into my father's office and there was one room that the door was always shut. And when the door would open, the room was spotless. My mom would be wearing like a, a cap over her hair so no dust would fall from her hair. She wore these white gloves and a big like thing around like an apron. So the room was spotless because when you're cutting a negative, if one dust falls on the negative, it could stay there for life and mm -hmm. that will remain. So I remember that room being spotless and clean and my mother cut the negative. So that meant so much to me. Yeah. And the negative was in really, really good condition. Maybe yes. a little a little vinegar syndrome, slight, slight, but that was all fixed with technology nowadays. But then that negative meant a lot to me that my mother's hands was on it. And, um, and the final product, like we talked about in the beginning, you will not be disappointed. It looks so beautiful. And, the, you know, I have to bring this up that Nuri Haviv, the cinematographer, you really see his gorgeous work and his oh, framing. Yeah and the beauty and the lushness of what he captured and the ugliness that he made look pretty in a way, if I could even say that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, you know, hats off to Nuri Haviv for bringing us such beautiful images of this most brutal film. Oh, yeah. And it, it, it just looks spectacular. We were sat there and at the beginning we were saying, look at the trees. Look at the grass. Look at the color of the boat. Oh my exactly. word! It's all so clear. Yes, yes, Incredible. exactly. I I said the same thing, and you know I've seen this movie so many times on yeah, different yeah. formats, different prints, and this really was something else to me. It it, it was mind boggling to view this this ugly movie in such a beautiful way. It really was mind boggling. <laughs> <laughs> well, Terry, we're going to have to get you back on with. Things that are, you know, that more spit coming, as you said, when that spit does come, please come back on the show and let's have, let's have some more chat about all of this. Thank you, Dave. I would love to come back. And it was really a pleasure speaking with you. And thank you so much for having me. That's no really problem. Really appreciate it. No, thank you, Terry. And my love to all of your family. And again, to everybody listening and watching this, just, just go and buy this 4K release because it really is spectacular. So again, thanks, Terry. Thank you so much, Dave. I appreciate it. Thank you.